welcome to my very first YouTube video. Um, I thought I would start off with like a chit chat get ready with me so you get to see my favorite eye makeup which is usually a cranberry smoky eye as well as you get to know me a little bit more um, and have more of an idea of what my channel's about. I will have a trailer but just in case you'd like a more one-on-one -on -one personal view then here we go. So I usually like to start off my eye looks with an eyeshadow primer so the eyeshadow has something to adhere to so it's going to last longer. I'm using the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Eyeshadow Primer and then I'm going to use some tape for some wing liner. So I'm just placing the tape so that it's going along my bottom lash line. So if my bottom lash line was to continue, that's where I'm putting the piece of tape which is right here. I go to both eyes and then I take my hands and I go back like this so that I can see if they're even. So I just look straight in the mirror, so I'm gonna look straight in my mirror and see that my hands seem about even so that I know it's gonna look even when I try to do like a wing or anything like that, of course. My name's Katherine Hoffman. I am a certified makeup artist as well as I am learning to be a full esthetician as well. So I've learned body sugaring, waxing, um, tinting and perming eyelashes. I've learned I have facials coming up, so I'm getting quite, quite well-rounded. I just put that bone color. So this is actually from the Too Faced, the Power of Makeup Nikki Tutorials collab. Um, as you can see, my favorite eyeshadow in here is the white bone shade, which is called Ivy. I just use this all over the lid to set the eyeshadow primer so that eyeshadows will blend easy over the powder. So yeah. Um, I've been doing makeup since I was about 16 years old. That's when I really got into makeup in general. Um, but I feel like, and I started doing some freelancing when I was about 17, 18. Um, but then when I was 18 turning 19, I ended up going to get my certification in makeup. Now I'm going to take a big round um, fluffy brush. My favorite just to define the crease. So this is going to be my transition shade. I want to keep going darker to give it more definition. Um, but I'm going to start with the Sigma E40. It's very fluffy and rounded so I can put um, a very sheer layer of eyeshadow on and build it up to intense, how intense I want it to be. So I'm going to start with a warm shade. I'm actually going to start with, it's called Burnt Orange from the Anastasia Renaissance palette. Since I'm going for a cranberry eye, it's going to be a warmer look. So I want my transition shade to be on the warmer side. So you see I have a lot of my brush. Always set the excess off so you have a smaller amount of product on your brush. And so you can build it up to what you need it to be. So just so you guys can see, I'm taking my brush and I'm sticking it right in the socket. And then I'm taking it all the way in and using circular motions to work my way out. And I'm going... All the way past that tape and kind of pick up a bit more product tap off the excess and then this is where we go back in so we want it so it's just a very sheer wash of color if you can see that right there sheer wash of color I'm bringing it so as soon as I have less product on my brush is when I bring it into the inner corner take my same shade again but this time I'm just like packing it on the outside corner See right there and we have our transition so it's going to do the exact same thing on the other eye um what else to know about me i've also worked at sephora um i worked at sephora um for a couple months so i had some medical issues so i had to leave at the time but yeah it was really good i definitely learned a lot of product knowledge i was working at sephora while i was getting my certification at makeup school which was awesome and I mean I became a makeup artist because I always wanted to do something to help other people and by makeup it's like I get to make someone feel beautiful about themselves and feel more confident about themselves which is so important and it's such a privilege and amazing feeling when someone tells me thank you because they feel good about themselves um, for the next shade I'm going to be taking, these are my Makeup Geek eyeshadows. Um, each one's about $6 a piece, so it's a really good deal for amazing pigmentation. I'm going to be taking this shade here, which is called Bitten 
by Make a Geek. So it's like a deep cranberry color. I love putting this in my crease. I'm obsessed with this color. Anyways, so I'm gonna take this cranberry shade and I'm just gonna pop it in my crease. So I'm taking this lower than the transition shade. And if you can see, I'm putting so most of the pigmentation is in the bottom at the outer corner of my crease in my outer corner. So I'm just buffing that in the outer corner and then I'm bringing it in like so. I'm actually going to take what's called Red Ochre from the Modern Renaissance palette because I want again it's a bit more depth. So Red Ochre is right here. So this is a deeper reddish shade. Um, so it's going to give depth, but still has the exact same tones as I want for the eye, but I'm concentrating this more on the outside corner of my crease and the outer corner of my eye as well. So just pick some up on your brush. Well, I forgot to mention this is a, um, fluffy blender brush. So I'm just taking my brush. I'm going in that outer corner. Concentrating this. And every time I put a darker color, I'm putting it a little bit lower than the last color. Whatever is left on my brush, so you see there's not very much product left on my brush, I'm just gonna lightly drag that just into the inner corner, but just very lightly. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm gonna go on to the actual lid color. So I'm taking a bit more of my Urban Decay Anti-Aging, oops, Urban Decay Anti-Aging eyeshadow primer, putting a little bit extra on the back of my hand and I'm going to take a small flat brush if I, um, so I'm just picking up a bit more of the eyeshadow primer onto my brush and I'm going to apply this to the lid so that the shimmery eyeshadow has something to adhere to and so it doesn't kind of muddle into the rest of my eyeshadows so I'm just going to be taking this on my eyelid just a very thin layer you don't need a lot of this just enough so that it has your whole eyelid covered all the way up to your crease. So for my lid shade, we're going old school with the Urban Decay Vice 3 palette. Um, this is something I actually got um, gratis at Sephora. So I'm going to be taking the eyeshadow called Sonic, which is right here. If you could tell us how it's well looked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Urban Decay Vice palettes. So I have this cranberry shade called Sonic here. So I'm going to apply that on a flat synthetic brush. Synthetic brushes are able to pick up more pigment and the denser it is, the more pigment it picks up. So I'm just swirling my brush in the shade. And then I want it to be a bit more intense in terms of pigmentation. So I'm going to take the Wet n Wild Makeup Setting Spray and I'm going to spray my brush. And then I'm going to apply the eyeshadow wet. So if you guys can see, like, yes, yes, that is what I want. So I'm just applying this all over my lid, all the way up into the crease where the darker shades meet my eyeshadow color. See? That looks so pretty. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to go back to this fluffy brush here again and I don't want there to be a line of demarcation from where my lid color meets the outer corner. So I'm going to take the Fit and Shade again, which is right here by Make a Peek. I'm just going to dip my brush a little bit in there, tap off the excess, and I'm just very lightly going to feather the two colors together. So you see here, so I'm just going to feather it. So that it blends in together so there's no harsh line of demarcation so yeah you're just going to fluff it you can even just kind of like do a patting motion and it'll just help them blend together okay so now I'm gonna go on to my wing liner my favorite felt tip liner is the Kat Von D um, this one's more of like a bristle except instead of like an actual felt tip itself um, I like this one and the felt tip one um, this one is in the shade Trooper, so it's black. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't really have a whole lot of fallout. I'm actually going to peel off the tape and see, see what I mean? You don't have to worry. We'll clean up for you because look how much I marked my tape. So don't worry about it. I'm just do the other side. This part is like so satisfying. You're like, yes. I'm actually going to take a face primer. So this is my, okay, one of my favorites. <laughs> Hourglass Mineral Veil is one of my favorites for like combo to oily skin. So if you have normal dry skin and oily skin, this works for you as well. Um, this is the Tarte Clean Slate Flawless Primer. I really like this primer. So I'm just applying this to my skin. But this really does make my foundation last a lot longer. And it does really brighten your skin, which I need because I got a few pimples right now. Um, <clears throat> and I have scarring, so I help. I find it just helps brighten that up a little bit. So I'm gonna take my Real Techniques Multitask Brush to buff in this primer. So just go underneath your eyes, like all along your jawline, just everywhere you need to put it. Okay, you guys. So I'm back, and then what I've done is. I've wet my Miracle Complexion sponge by Real Techniques. So the reason why I wet the sponge is so that it absorbs the water so it doesn't absorb as much as your foundation. Though if you really want like, to pack on coverage, then you can use it dry. But I find keeping it wet is so much better and it makes it really bouncy and fluffy and it just blends product. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foundation. The one I'm going to be using is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. Um, mine's in the shade Porcelain. And I love, 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 love this foundation. The only thing I have to say, though, is it's not that good for photography because it does have SPF in it. Um, SPF has titanium dioxide in it, and titanium dioxide flashes back in pictures. So as long as you don't have any flash, then you're fine. But if you do have flash, then just be weary. Dot this on my face but I'm actually going to take first a flat foundation brush and I'm just going to distribute it across my skin where I want it and if you see I put the most product where I have the most redness which usually is my cheeks and I feather it out into the rest of my face so I'm not going to take my sponge and I'm just going to blend it all out. So this helps if there's any like, streakiness and um, I just help find it absorbs any excess product that I don't need. Granted, this is already like a medium coverage foundation, so you don't really have to um, do that. So, yeah. Taking my foundation down my neck. I'm just blending that out. because I don't want a line of during markation where my foundation meets my neck. Um, so yeah, I just blend that in. I'm going to go on to concealer. I'm actually going to start with my face concealer. I'm just going to take a small brush. I'm just going to pop this on any acne that I have. I have quite a few on my chin right now. I think a lot of it's stress and, you know, time of the month comes, so your skin's just not wanting to cooperate with you no matter how much you ask it to. I have this wonderful one that's like right in between my eyebrows right now. It's like, that's, that's fantastic. Fantastic. So, I always, when I'm blending out though the concealer around my acne, I just blend the edges so I'm just going around the acne I'm not actually directly pushing on the acne so I don't disturb the product that's on the actual blemish itself well it looks pretty good to me I don't I can't change if there's texture or anything like that though my nose is still a tad tad bit red so I'm actually gonna take this Kat Von D concealer and sorry the concealer I was using before was it cosmetics bye bye under eye um, so I'm just putting down the center of my nose, this concealer, so it highlights 
my face but as well as it um it gives a bit more coverage to my nose just because that's usually where I get a bit red so I'm just using this to even out my skin and then I'm going to take my Bye Bye Under Eye underneath my eyes. This time I'm just taking a concealer brush F70, also by Sigma. I love Sigma brushes. They're my favorite. They're my favorite. Um, so I really want to try Zoeva brushes. I've heard so many good things about Zoeva brushes too. So, I mean, I'm a junkie when it comes to brushes. I love trying new brushes. I've tried Morphe brushes. They're pretty good. Um... Though I do find my Sigma ones do last just a bit longer, so, you know, you just pick it. So I applied the concealer under my eyes, so now I'm just taking the sponge again, and I'm blending in that concealer. I love the sponge for blending out under eye concealer just because it really does just pick up any excess products. So, so now I'm going to set everything with a powder. I'm going to be using a loose powder. This is the matte setting powder by cover effects i really like the matte one and this is in the shade light by the way i really do like the matte one because i find it melts into my skin a bit better and it looks amazing in photography this is what i wore on my wedding day so i'm actually mushing the powder into my sponge and so i'm going to be pressing this underneath my eyes i'm not baking i'm pressing it there's a big difference so i'm pressing the powder into my skin and when you press it into your skin with a sponge it just makes your pores look really flat, which is awesome. So it makes you a bit look more poreless and airbrush and everything we want in life. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to set the rest of my face with a fluffy brush. This is one I got at London Drugs. It's called London Look. It doesn't have a number on it, but I love this brush for powder. It's fluffy, but it's not too dense, and it's a bit on the smaller side compared to some really big fluffy brushes, which I prefer because I find I can get more in the crevices of my face. So I just, wherever I want to keep the coverage, I, I pat my powder in, but wherever I don't really have as much coverage or I'm not worried about that, then I take my brush and I just slightly throw it around because I don't need a lot. Like I said, I have dry skin, so I'm not really too concerned about, um, like my foundation melting off it's I just don't want it to look creepy so, so now I'm gonna start with some bronzer um, I'm using the physicians formula butter bronzer which looks like this um, what I really like about this is the tone of it so it's not really orangey it's more of like a yellowy like pinky tone um, what you see that there see it's not huge it's not that much darker than my actual skin tone um, also it smells like coconut too who can complain about smelling like coconuts, right? Um, so I really love this bronzer. I'm just using it on a Real Techniques Duo Fiber Brush. Um, this one's called the Duo Fiber Face Brush. I love this brush for bronzing just because a Duo Fiber Brush doesn't pick up as much pigment at one time. So I can determine how much um, bronzer and how much pigment I put on my face each time. So I'm just starting at the temples and I'm going around. Um, the reason why I put bronzer, bronzer is where you put wherever the sun would naturally hit you. So usually that's like your forehead, the top of your cheekbones, and sometimes across the nose. I personally don't like to put it on the top of my nose. Um, I have a pretty small nose, so anything that I put dark on it kind of makes it look receded and just doesn't look as nice on me. But that's just me. So you see, you can see some warmth compared to this side. And I'm just bringing down some along my jawline to one chisel if you have like a double chin so just do that <laughs> um and then it just balances out all the colors in your face with the rest of your body so i'm not going to go into contouring so i have the anastasia beverly hills contour kit i've had this since i was 17 years old i can't believe this has been like three years and i use it on my clients all the time and look at it it still looks like it's so brand new. It's crazy. These are so pigmented, so you don't need a whole lot in terms of product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shade here, which is called Fawn. It's a cool tone shade. So the reason why I use a cool tone shade is so that it doesn't look... If it's too warm, then it kind of looks like an awkward 
sunburn on someone who is fair as I am. If you're more medium tone, you can get away using like a warmer um, product to contour with. Though I want it to look like an actual shadow, so use something that's cool toned. So I'm just taking this on a Luxie brush. This one is the Luxie 522 Tapered Highlighter Brush, though I like to use it for contour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top of my ear all the way to the corner of my mouth. You can already kind of see this is where my hollow is. So that's where I'm going to put it. So I'm just taking it, starting at the back, and I work my way forward. And how chiseled you want to look depends on how far forward you bring it. If you need like an extra guy line, go like this. And that's where your hollows are. I mean, I've been doing my face long enough um, where I don't need to do that. But, and if you can see, when I used all the product on my brush, I'm going upwards when I'm blending that contour. Um, Cause I don't want to bring it down or else it starts to look muddy. Um, I want to bring it a bit more upwards so it melts into the bronzer. Now I'm gonna go into highlighter. I know a lot of people usually do blush and highlighter, but I like putting highlighter on before my blush, just so when I put the blush on, it all kind of melts together. It's Urban Decay Sin. This is my absolute favorite highlighter. Um, as you can tell, it's well loved by me. <laughs> and I use it on so many of my clients. Um, so I'm just going to take this Luxie 660 Precision Foundation Brush, but it's kind of fluffy. What jelly bean? Sorry, that's my other kitty. <laughs> Anyways, so I just pick a little bit, and since it's kind of fluffy, it doesn't pick up too much of the product. So I'm going to put this on top on the highest point of my cheekbone. And I bring it just to the center of my cheek, just because I like my cheek to look a little bit dewy. I'm going to bring it around in a C shape right here. This just above my eyebrow, like exactly where that arch is. I'm going to do that on both sides. Then I'm just going to bring... I'm just going to do two pulls down the center of my nose. So I'm not putting it directly, like, so there's a little bit on my nose, but I'm not doing, like, a ball of highlighter. I like it mostly on the bridge of my nose. Like I said, I'm pretty dry, so me putting highlighter on my face doesn't do a whole lot in terms of, like, making me oily. And I put just a tad bit on my chin. If you're oily, then stick to your cheekbones above the eyebrow and avoid the center of your face where your, like, nose and chin and lip is, just so, because it'll make you look a little bit overly greasy. The grand, that's also personal preference. If you love doing that, then have at it, right? So now I'm going to be taking the Tarte Blush in Parte. Um, this actually comes in your birthday gift at Sephora. My friend didn't want it, so she gave it to me, and I was like, dude, I'll totally take it. Like, I'm down for that. And it's like this pretty nude color. And it just picks up enough pigment on your brush, but not too much. So it's, this is just like a round, fluffy brush. I always go, like, to suck in my cheeks. And then I know where to put it, where the ball of my cheek is, but sucked in so I don't go past a certain point. And there we go. I love that color. It's like the first time I've used that shade, and it's gorgeous. I'm now just taking the Sephora um, Pro Contour Precision 79 brush. to blend out any edges and everything like that and yes now that I've done all my face products I'm actually going to take my makeup setting spray by again wet and wild though this is half wet and wild and half of the pixie one the dewy mist um just so it sets all the powders so it's going to make sure the powders melt into your face so that it doesn't look so powdery and there doesn't look like this film that's on your skin so you just take it and just spray And then tan yourself. <laughs> Another really nice makeup setting spray is I love the illuminating one by Cover Effects. Like it's just this fine mist instead of like squirting at you. It's always fun to be squirted at, right? And just squirt it at. <laughs> okay, so for brows, I like to use a pomade. Um, I don't really need to fill in my brows because I do have you can tell fairly filled in kind of like bushier brows though they're shaped and everything I wax my own brows anyways so what I really like to use is this stuff it is the ColourPop brow pomade I'm not sure if you guys can see it there you go the ColourPop brow pomade I use in the shade redhead um, the reason why I use the shade redhead is because 
I have red hair. My hair is very warm, but my eyebrows are very cool toned. So I'm using this very faintly just so I change the tone in my brows so everything melts together a bit better. Let's open my brow. It looks very natural. Um, it doesn't look too overdone. So my brows are all done, exactly how I want it. So there we go. So now we're gonna go back to the eyes. Um, I'm gonna be taking this Morphe M22. It's kind of like a fluffy pencil brush, but it's on the slightly fluffier side. And I'm going to take the shade um, Burnt Orange from the Modern Renaissance palette again, which was just this shade here. Um, and I'm gonna put that on my brush again, tap out the excess, and I'm gonna put this on my lower lash line. So I'm just gonna put this on my lower lash line here. I'm gonna take Bitten, and I'm gonna take this on a smaller, more dense brush. So this is a Sigma one. It's a Sigma E30 brush. Love this brush. Um, so I'm gonna go in again with that shade Bitten from the Makeup Geek Z palette I have. So it's right here. So that was that deep cranberry shade that we put in our crease. I'm gonna put this more on um, two thirds of the way. So basically where my eyelashes stop growing, that's where I'm gonna stop. So that's what it's gonna look like on your lower lash line. So I'm now going to take a denser brush. Um, this one is a Luxie, uh, a Luxie 221 flat definer brush. This really just packs on color. It's very thin and skinny, which I really like personally. Um, so I'm going to take that red ochre color from the Modern Renaissance palette, which was this shade right here. And I'm just going to put that on my brush and tap off the excess just because when it's a denser brush it packs on more color right and I'm just putting this on the very outer corner right up by my lashes this is also time I like to take a like look at my top eyeshadow see if there's any blending I need to do it looks pretty good just taking a fluffier brush um, so I'm actually going to take a smaller I'm going to take the same fluffy brush because there's no product left on it. You can always put it on to like the back of your wrist or a towel or like Sephora has that color switch thing um, to change shades. And I'm going to take my highlighter again by Sin. So this one. And I'm going to put this on my brow bone because I really like it when my brow bone ties in with my highlighter on my face just because it brings the look together. Um, don't get me wrong, there's sometimes there's sometimes I don't do that as well um, just depending on what the look itself is and sometimes I need you know to use a different tone or shade but for the most part this is what I like to do and I love that highlighter I love that highlighter I've had it for a year and I'm obsessed with it still I tried a few other ones and I like other ones too but you know you always have like that's your ride or die that's my ride or die for sure um, I'm actually gonna go into my lip color now I'm going to be using the Anastasia Liquid Lipstick in the shade Lovely. Um, I absolutely, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Um, there we go. In Lovely. I love this shade. It's actually the shade I wore on my wedding day. And it's just gorgeous. And I love liquid lipsticks in general. Just because, you know, they last like so much longer on your lips. And it's like mostly transfer proof. There we go. The lipstick. I love this color. And finally, we're going to go on to lashes. Um, I'm starting with mascara. I'm using the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I really like this one. It's quite nice. This is what the wand looks like. It's quite thin, but I still find it gives a good amount of volume. So, so I'm going to be taking the Ardell these are the Ardell 100% Natural Hair 162 Black Lashes. These are gorgeous. I actually haven't worn this pair before, so I'm really excited. Um, but my favorite lashes are the Ardell WSBs. Like, 
I die for those lashes. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, I go through packs of them all the time. But I still find they're really good at being reusable as well. There we go. We have both lashes on. What do you guys think? So pretty. I love these lashes. They're amazing. Awesome. So now we're just going to put on mascara on our lower lashes. Okay, everybody, so this is the finished makeup look. Um, I hope you guys like it. I'll close my eyes for you guys so you can see the makeup. Don't mind if you still see eyelash glue, like, drying. Um, contour, highlight. So this is my very favorite go-to cranberry smoky eye. So please let me know if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel. That'd be wonderful. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please leave a comment down below of things you'd like to see, if there's something more about me you'd like to know, anything like that. So it was lovely doing this video for you guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And I'll, I'll see you here soon on YouTube. Bye. If you can hear that, that's my lovely kitten, Jill. <laughs> She's only 10 months old. So, oh, focus. Okay. Um, she's only 10 months old. So she's having fun playing in the beauty room. Jill Cooper Huffman. Stop it. <laughs> Kitten life. Do you want to go out? Do you need to ex exit the premises? Is that your issue? Hmm? Silly kitty. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear that meowing, but that's my fat cat, Jack. <laughs> He's like, dude, feed me. He always wants treats. He always does. Like, there's not a time a day he doesn't want treats. Like, ever. <laughs>